inborn maru from amiga cariocyte platelet will come out as a fragment then it will go to blood platelet is very small it contains three types of granules which are alpha granules electron dense granules lysosomes Alpha granules contain platelet factor 4 which is heparin antagonist. Also it contains fibrinogen and von Willebrand factor. Electron dense granules contain adenosine diphosphate, adenosine triphosphate and calcium. And there is serotonin also. Lifespan of platelet is from 7 to 10 days but it is reduced if there is increased platelet production as in infection, splenic enlargement and thrombosis. Now what happens in injury? This is the platelet coming from the blood. It has receptor called glycoprotein 1A which will bind platelet to collagen fibers. Note, collagen is made of three polypeptide alpha chains. This is called von Willebrand factor. It mainly comes from endothelial cells, also from platelet alpha granules. Platelet will bind to von Willebrand factor by glycoprotein 1B receptor that will expose glycoprotein 2B3A binding sites which will bind also to the von Willebrand factor. Platelets will extrude long pseudopodia with granules in the center. The result is characteristic fried egg appearance then granules will be secreted. So final result of all previous is adhesion of platelets to exposed matrix via glycoprotein receptors which bind to collagen and von Willebrand factor and also secreting platelet granules. Thrombexane A2 and serotonin from the granules will make vasoconstriction. This is soluble fibrinogen in plasma. Fibrinogen is also in granules of platelets as mentioned before. The glycoprotein 2B3A will bind to fibrinogen. To allow platelet to platelet aggregation, it is made by thromboxane A2 and ADP. Initiation of coagulation will occur by the extrinsic pathway, which begin by tissue factor on cell surface, which will interact with factor 7 to be activated. So, pathway begins and the result is small amount of thrombin. Extrinsic pathway is rapidly terminated by tissue factor pathway inhibitor, which form a quaternary complex of activated factor 7, tissue factor, activated factor 10, tissue factor pathway inhibitor. Thrombin shares in aggregation but thrombin of extrinsic pathway is insufficient to make significant change of fibrinogen to fibrin polymer. So what is the importance of this small amount of thrombin? This small amount of thrombin will prime the intrinsic pathway which will activate a great amount of thrombin resulting in explosive generation of thrombin. But how thrombin is activated in the intrinsic pathway? Membrane phospholipids of platelets together with 
activated factor 5 and 10 with presence of calcium will form prothrombinase complex which will change in active prothrombin to active thrombin note platelet factor 3 is a phospholipid composed of glycerol backbone one carbon attached to fatty acid one carbon attached to acetyl group and one carbon attached to phosphate group which is attached to protein group thromboxane is also derived from a phospholipid called arachidonic acid after exposure to phospholipase A2 now let's return to thrombin thrombin is a grateful person as it was activated by factors 5 and 10 so it will activate any inactive factors 5 and 10 and it will cleave factor 8 from von Willebrand factor to be able to produce more and more factor 10 also it will help a friend of his friends it will activate factor 11 however all these actions are written on its blue magical instrument now let's go to the most important action of thrombin which is fibrin formation fibrin is formed from fibrinogen the inactive form of fibrin fibrinogen consists of two identical subunits each contain three non-similar polypeptide chains a and alpha b and beta and finally gamma thrombin will cleave fibrinogen to be fibrin monomer fibrin monomer consists of three paired alpha beta and gamma chains fibrin monomer will change to polymer by hydrogen bonding now let's return to blood clot where clot retraction will occur by the aid of glycoprotein 2b3a and fibrin polymers thrombin will activate factor 13 then factor 13 will stabilize the snakes oh sorry the fibrin polymers and make them cross-linked now let's start the mechanism of clot destruction vascular endothelial cells will secrete prostacycline which is a potent inhibitor of platelet aggregation prostacycline is the corresponding of thromboxane a2 in the endothelial cells as it is also a prostaglandin derived from arachidonic acid but prostacycline's action is opposite to that of thromboxane A2 as it lowers calcium and inhibits platelet aggregation also it causes vasodilation thrombin will bind to an endothelial cell surface receptor called thrombomodulin which will lead to activation of protein C on protein C receptor protein S will bind to protein C to bind it to the platelet surface protein C is not grateful to thrombin which activates it so it will deactivate factors 5 and 8 which are from the friends of the kind thrombin the most important in blood clot destruction is fibrinolytic system where a protease called tissue plasminogen activator from endothelial cells will bind to fibrin and activate thrombus bound plasminogen to be active plasmin active plasmin will make fibrin degradation note tissue plasminogen activator is inactivated by tissue plasminogen activator inhibitor while tissue plasminogen activator inhibitor 
is inactivated by protein C. Antithrombin also shares in clot destruction as heparin will bind to it and induces a conformational changes in it to allow its binding to active factor 10 and thrombin so it will deactivate factor 10 also thrombin will bind to it with the assist of heparin to be deactivated the last thing to mention is that a protease in plasma will cleave von Willebrand factor polymers. 